trying to fight the inevitable is a frustrating life. Amen. You ever seen people trying to fight getting old? It's a frustrating life because you're going to get old. They fighting it the hard as they can, but it's a frustrating life. Fighting something that's going to happen is kind of futile. It's futility. Learn to embrace that this is going to happen and you'll have a happier life. You won't put all your eggs in that basket. You'll start realizing, I, need to, I better start building some other baskets because what I'm trying to keep is going to fade at some point. Amen? So, um, so but anyway, uh, th what, 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 I, what I wanted to talk about uh, tonight was uh, was 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 that some things have to happen even in the church. Some things have to happen in your body that seem negative in order for your body to grow. In order for your body to get strong, there are negative things that happen. They seem negative at the time, but it is for the development of your body. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes even in your marriage relationship, you have to go through those dark times, those hard times, and those frustrating times. And it seems like, it seems negative, but not realizing that those times are building a stronger foundation for the, for, for the, for the beautiful thing God is building. Those hard times built, spread out as foundation that will be strong enough to hold all your babies and all of your uh, uh, and, and all of the wealth or whatever God's bringing in your life, those hard times are what built the foundation to hold it all. It, while you was going through those times, you couldn't see it. It didn't look like it. Uh, it was crazy. It was negative. Not realizing that it was inevitable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One of the, one of the examples is Jesus going to the cross when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went to God and prayed, Lord, if it be thy will, let I don't want to go through this. Let this pass from me. But it was God's will. It was, it, was, it was futile to argue against his purpose. Your purpose, God said, was to be a sacrificial lamb. So it's futile to argue against your purpose. I put you here to die. So you have to fulfill the purpose. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So there is a great example of of, of, of futility not saying Christ wasn't going to go but the the overwhelming image I'm sure he saw of what would happen to him would have made anybody say wait a minute this is going to be pretty rough they're going to they're going to do so 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 trying to stop the inevitable is 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 how we waste our effort talents and abilities is this making any sense you can waste your talents and strengths and abilities trying to stop what's going to happen are you hearing what I'm saying? Not saying we just give in to negativity. I'm saying that there are certain things that got to happen. There are principles. There are laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the things, the things that, are, that must happen hap, are, are, are going to happen to further, to open something, to push me to the next place, or to further God's will in my life, to uncover a destiny or a purpose that I have. Say amen. So fighting against the inevitable negativity that must happen first stops me from being pushed into the place of destiny. Are you understanding what I'm saying? In other words, many times we start swinging against the negativity. We fight that part first, not realizing God's allowing that to push us because something could literally be blocking us from going to the next place. Is this, is this, oh, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Okay. So God must allow the negative to happen. Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time for, 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 for negativity. There's a time for to be positive. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time for everything. Time for peace. Time for war. Time for love. Time for hate. These are things that are just uh, seasons that will happen to everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We get in trouble with God when we try to prolong a season that God is saying, that season I'm killing. Or, 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 or I'm killing this in that season. 
and we try to hold on to it and mainly it's relationships when we use it when we usually get in trouble because those are some of the hardest things to 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 cut because these relationships are usually were great in the beginning or they were used by God in the beginning are you hearing what I'm saying but I found that when those relationships become a hindrance then God will begin to speak to us to lay aside those relationships even though they once were great relationships even though they were once encouraging relationships let me let me give you an instance there, there could be a person that God has used to, to speak the word in your life. Me and my wife have gone through this. My wife, even when she was single, she went through this. Where God has surrounded her with people that spoke the word, that, that encouraged her to live for God, to get on track, to seek the Holy Ghost, to get filled, to, to be a young Christian woman. But then as she began to grow in God, those same people began to, uh, those same people, uh, 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 not only were they bringing the good, but they were bringing the gossip. And so, and so they they were good, in, in 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 one level, but because they didn't because they didn't grow out of uh, the negativity, even though they God used them on this level, Amen. God had to tell my wife, and even I've had people like that in my life had to tell us to lay them aside because they are no longer beneficial for this level. Uh, Y'all understanding what I'm saying? Doesn't mean those people we didn't have love. Don't mean we didn't have a relationship. Don't mean that the thing they helped me to do or to build were not good. But there is a reason that God told me to lay them aside. And it's usually, but, and that goes for everybody. If you don't, if God is dealing with a, with, with, with a, with, if God is trying to develop a fruit of the spirit in your life in an area, listen to me now. And you won't develop it. If you don't develop that, that fruit in the season that God is telling you to, then he will tell other people to leave you alone in that area. Because God knows evil communications will corrupt the good manners. So that's why God begins to quarantine folk that won't grow. One of the, one of the worst things a farmer or gardener uh, sees is when he's got a whole bunch of plants growing and you got one over here that won't grow. You, you start thinking, does this plant have a bug? Is it sick? Will it infect the other plants? So that's why the farmer's thinking it's better probably to go and cut this plant down than allow it to live because I don't know if this plant's so infective. Say amen. Are y'all there? So it doesn't mean that a person wasn't fruitful for their original task. That means, it doesn't mean they didn't help me. It doesn't mean they didn't love me. But in, as Christians, we must understand there are things that must happen. There are people that must come. There are people that must go. And if you don't know that, you'll be grieving over folks all your life. Amen. Trying to figure out why come they, that was my brother, that was my sister. But, but seasons change. Even your natural brothers and sisters are supposed to go. Amen. But because we have this clannish mentality, nobody ever goes anywhere. We really think everybody's supposed to be with us all our life. That's why people get saved and don't even give up worldly friends because they thought everybody's still supposed to be with them. Is this too much? Are y'all there? So the ability to release uh, is a maturity characteristic that God is processing in us. Oh, y'all, I don't know if y'all heard what I'm saying. Maybe y'all not catching what I'm saying. He's processing me to learn how to release. Because what becomes, what's a blessing in one season becomes a hindrance in another season. Amen. Why does it say lay aside the sins and the weights that easily beset me? It ain't always, this ain't talking about something that just came into my life. This might have been something that was already in my life. Are y'all there? Amen. The Bible says that Paul took a guy with him called John Mark. The Bible says that there came a time that John Mark was unfaithful unreliable and probably not even loyal John Mark wanted didn't go to the hard places with Paul but yet John Mark wanted to go on this new journey and Paul told Barnabas we ain't taking John Mark because John Mark didn't go through the hard places say amen. amen Bible says strife rose up against these two men of God these great men of God and if you don't know if you don't think Barnabas is great read the epistle of Barnabas Barnabas has a letter 
that, that they didn't put it in the council and the seal didn't put Barnabas letter in the Bible but it's definitely a, 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 a backs up the scripture but you see how these men got in the strife and had to split are y'all there because there was a season that John Mark didn't need to go are y'all hearing what I'm saying so 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 if and now 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 Paul being the great apostle he was I wouldn't have sided with John Mark I would have had to side with Paul are you hearing what I'm saying but let me give you another instance are y'all there the Bible says that Abraham had men and Lot had men and Abraham had cattle and Lot had cattle and there became conflict over grazing land the Bible says that because they was about ready to fall out Abraham said man you choose a way you choose one way I choose one way in other words they was getting into strife over the grazing land now me being a wise man would have said Abraham take whatever you want because I can't leave you I'm not going to fall out with you. Say amen. amen. Are y'all there? Amen. But if you go back and remember that many times uh, God did never tell um, Abraham to take Lot. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there came a point where it was inevitable. Lot had to go. Amen. No matter how much Lot wanted to stay. No matter how much Lot blessed Abraham at first. I know Abraham liked Lot because Abraham didn't have a son. Amen. So Lot was sort of, he could have looked at Lot and said, well, if I don't get, if God, if God don't give me a son, I, at least I got some out of my family that I can leave, I can be, can be an earn, I can leave my stuff to. Maybe that's why he took Lot. The whole point was, as long as he was with Lot, he didn't go to that next level. He couldn't come into his covenant place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So does that mean Lot was evil? No. Does that mean everything Lot helped Abraham to do was bad? No. It just means there was inevitability. And it's futile to fight against inevitability. How many times do we try to fight? How, what did Abraham try? I'm sure he tried to, well, you know, no. How many times? He probably tried to go out there and work it out with lots of men over and over. And, and I didn't work it out with y'all, you know. Let's keep the peace. And sometimes we can have this false love and false peace. And we only use it because we're scared to let go. So we got to use the false love. I'm walking in love. But really we just scared to let go. So we, so we use the false love and the false peace with one another. When in reality we know in our heart I need to release you. Is it? Yeah. Anybody want to talk about this? So. Uh, but anyway. So of course we know the story. That, that Lot ended up leaving Abraham. And that's when. God began to really deal with Abraham and start bringing Abraham into the place he called Abraham into. Which telling you that Lot could have been blocking. That meant God's, listen, God, in other words, I believe God was saying, I'm not going to bless you with Lot. There's some people in your life, God says, I'm not going to do it with them in your life. It, 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 it don't mean they bad. See, I think we think people are bad. It don't mean people are bad. It just means they're their spiritual DNA doesn't match yours. And if I allow and, and if I allow that to stay around you, it will begin to infect your DNA and you'll start to produce their vision for you. Not what I'm telling you. Talk to me. So God had to tell Abraham. Or God had to allow Abraham to release Lot. Are y'all there? Amen. And once he did that. So the, the law of release. This is a good word. The law of release is a spiritual principle that Christians must mature into. It doesn't happen automatically because when you're a baby Christian, you don't want to let nobody go. When you just walk with the Lord, you hold on to everybody. You want to go back to the first person that's to help you get saved. Everybody, you want everybody your friend. But as you grew, some of you all know, when you got saved, you had rose-colored glasses. Everybody loved God. Everybody's walking to just holy, loving the Lord. As you grew, you started to see, wait a minute. Everybody don't live right. Everybody, you start seeing the character flaws in people where they didn't develop the fruit in their season. Oh, y'all ain't even here tonight. 
they didn't develop the fruit in their season. In other words, God was dealing with them about developing patience or getting out of gossip or stop fornicating or stop being a liar or a thief or a cheater or whatever so that they wouldn't affect people with their negative fruit. But they didn't do that, so now they can't be trusted with people. So all God can use them to do is the preliminary work. Maybe they can get you saved. Or maybe they can encourage you when you get saved, but they have no fruit to help you maintain or walk into maturity. So this is the reason why you start seeing like, wait a minute, they, this, ain't, this ain't good fruit, they, this ain't, something ain't right here. Amen. And you realize that as a point around these people, you stop growing. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the point that you have to decide. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think y'all even hearing what I'm saying. Are y'all there? Amen. Are y'all there? So, so anyway, so the, the problem is, you know, it, it can happen on a job. You can get on a job and be very promising, ready to go to the top. If you, if you connect with the wrong people, these people say, well, I've been here for 10 years, and they're still where they are. Matter of fact, some of them people on jobs say, I don't even want, I don't want to be no manager. They don't even want to grow into nothing else. That's all they want to be is they don't want to go up the ladder. I don't want all that work. Well, guess what that person going to do? They're going to counsel you not to go up. They're going to counsel you not to take the next step. Why are you going back to school for? They, gonna they, ain't gonna, they don't want you to educate yourself or get better. Why? Because they've decided they're not going. They helped you when you came in. They showed you the ropes. They knew what to tell you to do in the preliminary stages. But now that you are, have, are growing in that job, you're starting to see that their negative uh, uh, behavior or their, uh, or, or, or their undisciplined uh, life on the job it's going to cause you problems if you follow their example. Amen. So there has to be a breaking. And what happens, people get, people usually don't like to break away because people get offended when you have to let them go. Is this too much or not too much? So this law of release is a fundamental principle in the body of Christ. It's fundamental. Many of us block our own uh put it this way there's a time that god will start speaking to a pastor to start bringing a person up giving them leeway start letting them minister start letting them do things bring them up before the people start sanctioning them and stuff like that that person at that time has to recognize that everything i'm in, everything in my life can't go to this place that i'm going to every relationship can't go so then they you have to, they have to turn around and start doing inventory and start finding out what is vital to me what is really important to me i can't take everything some stuff becomes a hindrance on the next level is this too much so the law of release says that in order for me to gain more of god i must release something on this level I can't get to that level and release it. I got to release something on this level because God needs something to feel. If uh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Is this too much? So, when people don't release, then all of a sudden, they, they, people could see th they was being brought up or God was moving in their life and all of a sudden, they went back into that same place. And it's like, what happened? We were, I was going up. What happened? What well, a law of release, where well, they didn't release being undisciplined. They didn't release being tardy. They, come on. They didn't release not being faithful. Those are the sins and the ways that easily get you off track. When you're going up to the next level, they, these sins get you off track. These ways get you off track. Say amen. They didn't release people who became crutches or who became their stability. So as they started to go up, uh, because they didn't release those people, they began to, those people began to get them off. Uh, is, this, is this too much to understand? So the law of release is, means what must happen, must happen. It's futility to go against what must happen. And usually God tells us way in the beginning what should happen, and we spend the rest of our time trying to not let it not happen. You could come to a church, and God will tell you, don't get involved with them. 
Didn't mean they bad. It just means don't get involved with them. Amen. Treat them, hey brother, hey sister, I love you, but don't, don't get deeply involved. You find yourself involved with them. And you wonder why your Christian life can't grow. You disobey God somewhere. You disobeyed him when he told you don't do that. Talk to me. And so then when you on that level, you start thinking that, 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 that the pastor's favoring people because you're not moving. But you don't realize it's not favoring people. It's God that they are obeying. And God is shining favor upon a person because of their obedience. Because they're developing their fruit in the season. Doesn't the Bible say you, uh, you, you bring forth fruit in its season? That means there's a time period to bring forth fruit. That, listen to me. There are the, we, we know about the fruits of the Spirit, right? There's a, time, there's a season you bring forth patience. There's a season you bring forth humility. There's a season that you're supposed to have developed long-suffering. There's a season you're supposed to have developed temperance. Your attitude shouldn't be the same way after, from, from year one to year ten. You shouldn't still be falling down after, after ten years. You shouldn't be nasty after 10 years. You didn't develop fruit in your season. Amen. Say amen. amen. If you don't develop fruit in your season, you're going to demand fruit out of others. Amen. If I don't develop long suffering, I'm going to demand you long suffer with me. You didn't catch what I said. If I don't demand patience, if I don't develop patience, I'm going to demand everybody be patient with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to pull from people what I didn't develop. Say, bring forth fruit in its season. There are seasons, if, you, if, you, if God is calling you to be an elder, there are seasons you're supposed to be disciplined. There are seasons you're supposed to be on time. There are seasons you're supposed to be, uh, you, 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 there are seasons you're supposed to grow, walk, begin to walk in maturity. You're supposed to be developing uh, 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 leadership qualities and leadership skills. If you know that's what he's calling you to, then your job is to start developing. So when the time comes, you have nothing, no sin away easily besetting you. Oh man, y'all understanding what I'm saying? Do you understand that this is our problem that we go to church but never develop? We don't develop the fruit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a season that God wants to use you to speak in the lives of, of women who are where you were or where you are. But the season he was trying to get you over lust and fornication, you didn't graduate. You didn't, you didn't graduate that season. So now the time is upon you where he wants to release you to do something, but you don't have the character Amen. or the maturity because if somebody was to get around you and you haven't developed that fruit, then you're going to make them feel like fornicating is okay. Yeah. You don't have the law in your life. Oh, Talk to me. This is why we must develop fruit. When you get saved, it's time to develop fruit. It ain't time to go to church. It ain't time to sit up here word. It's time to develop, start developing. Why? Because the master will come one day and say, I have need of thee. And if you undone, that's on you. You didn't catch what I said. I said, if you undone, you're going to be sitting on the sideline jealous and competing with folk because they going up the ladder because they were developing fruit. You might not like them. They might not be as gifted or talented because fruit ain't got nothing to do with gifts and talents. Fruit got to do with obedience to the word of God. Talk to me. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So the lack of when a person does not develop fruit. I was teaching, I've been teaching my son. Been teaching him for years. He didn't know he was being taught. He didn't know, you know, I like the karate kid. Because the karate kid didn't know he was being taught. And my son didn't know he was being taught. Um, but now that he has a job, the principles that I was teaching him when he used to work with me, and I used to tell him, no, you ain't quitting. Come on, work. I don't care if you're tired. Get up. Stay focused. Pay attention. Be respectful. Be presentable. Look me in my eye when you talk to me. 
these are principles that he walked in when he got a job. Didn't know he had them. He didn't know he had them. But he was being prepared Amen. for the next level. Amen. Now, I would have done him a disservice to see his immaturity and to not address it. And that's what you all are telling me when I had to cut you and deal with you. You're telling me, leave me in my immaturity. If you can't accept the cut or the correction, you're telling me, leave me in my immaturity. Y'all got what I'm saying? So what, was I preparing my son to be around me? No. Because if he's around me, like Jesus says, as long as I'm around, they ain't going to fast to pray. They don't need to. I'm preparing him to go not to be around me. And to know that the disciplines I'm laying in him will come out of him based upon what was laid in it with the foundation that I laid. Say amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the lack of developing your fruit in your season will cost you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People want to get married. They never develop the fruit of patience. They never develop long suffering. They never develop temperance. No meekness. They never develop no domestic skills. They never develop the quiet spirit. These are fruits of the spirit. The Bible says holy women used to use this. This is how holy women lived. Uh, so they never developed it. But they spent all their time trying to catch a man with beauty. Amen. And working on this outside. And fixing up this outside what, 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 what they think a man want. And doing their hair. And working on clothes. And putting on eyelashes and eyeliners. And all of the things, all the things that they use to hook a man. They didn't work on that inner person. So when they get married, they're shocked that they can't navigate marriage. Amen. They're shocked they have nothing. To, we don't talk no more. We don't talk because you didn't build your depth of conversation. You didn't learn how to be a conversationalist. You didn't. You weren't developing the fruit of listening to folk. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. So then, when they get in the new season or get in the place where they of the blessing, they can't handle it. Amen. Didn't develop fruit in the season. Talk back to me. Amen. So say there are things that must be cut out and must be cut off. There are things that must be cut out and must be cut off. And you fighting against it is just futility. It's not going to change. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. Real quick, Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm going to let y'all go. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Y'all seeing that? The question I asked was, what was up with King Uzziah? That they couldn't see the Lord until he died. Are y'all not seeing that? As long as Uzziah was living, they couldn't see the Lord high and lift it up. That let me know King Uzziah was in the place of the Lord. King Uzziah is everything you exalted in God's place. King Uzziah is what you worship and it's what you spend your time on. It could be your own opinion, your own will. It could be your selfishness. But King Uzziah obviously was blocking them from seeing a move of God in their life. The Bible says once he died or was removed or was cut off or was released, all of a sudden they saw the Lord. So people that always say, I don't know, I don't know, if I'm just driving my prayer life, I don't know what's going on. You got Uzziahs in your life. You got things you won't cut off, things that need to die, but you're resuscitating, you're resuscitating your own, you, 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 you're resuscitating your own bondage. Something is trying to be Lord of your life and you won't cut it off. Somebody's trying to be Lord in your life and you won't cut them off. And so you can't see the Lord high and lifted up. You can't sense the presence of God like you would be able to because King Uzziah is a presence eater. He eats the presence of God. He sucks the life out of the move of God. That's why the Bible said the train couldn't feel the temple. The Holy Spirit couldn't flow in the house of God. As long as King Uzziah was there, they couldn't, the, 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 the Holy Spirit wasn't free to reign. Because King Uzziah is a controlling force that sucks the, the life of the saints, that sucks the attention and worship away from God onto itself. It's like, the same way like the, the spirit of Simon or the spirit of Elias that sucks the, gets the people's attention off of God and gets it onto themselves. So the people can't see Jesus high and lifted up. They can only see that they can only see King Uzziah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what, what that told me was God, King Uzziah needed to die. 
look throughout the Bible, you'll find people that were supposed to die. They was in the way. They, were, they had a blocking spirit. That's a good word. See, there are, there are real spirits called blocking spirits. That people that, that deal, with the, deal with limitation, that's the people who say, I get to this door and something happens and I never can go over the hump. I never can get through that door. We never can get. It's a blocking spirit. There's a Uzziah type spirit that is blocking you from, from, making your, from, from getting to your breakthrough. But it's tied into something you won't cut off. You didn't catch what I said. See, everybody wants to just blame the devil, but the devil has having a legal license. That's a right he has that he's in your life. So it's tied to something you won't cut off. And, and somewhere in this previous season, God was dealing with you to develop the fruit in that area, and you didn't. See, if you were to develop the fruit in that area, the devil wouldn't be strong in that area. Y'all not listening to me. But because you didn't develop the fruit in that area, the devil's strong in that area. Say amen. And so you, and he's, he's blinding you from telling you what you should be cutting off. I told you Satan fights you in cycles. So in cycles, he sends, he sends that Uzziah type spirit in your life. And that, and that person's goal is to take you back to a cycle. That's why when they show up, people who you say, I'm, I'm, I'm done with them. They call you, you write back gospel, you feel yourself go right back through that. You lose the presence of God. You lose your, your fervency for God. You feel yourself go right back in that mess again. And you, and you hang up and you feel bad and you repent and you pray. And Lord, I don't want that in my life no more. Say amen. King his eyes on the internet with pornography. Say amen. I don't, you know, I don't want it in my life no more. You do it and you cry. I ain't going to do it no more yet. As soon as you get an opportunity, say opportunity. As soon as you get an opportunity to do it, you're doing it again. Because you're not killing what needs to be killed. You're not cutting off what should be cut off. So you're asking God to do for you what he's telling you to do. He said, if you face it, I'll, I'll give you power to deal with it, but I'm not going to kill it for you. You kill it. You got to make a decision to cut it off. Then you will have power to cut it off. Say amen. amen. God gives us more grace when we resist. That's why I said resist the devil, he'll flee. But you must first resist. Talk to me. So this King Uzziah is a blocker of the presence of God. It's a block of the glory of God. And you must identify it. And that's why the Bible says this, thing, this man had to die before these people could see the Lord again. And, this, and usually this happened when you were talk, walk, first walking with the Lord or you started walking with the Lord, had a good season, and all of a sudden something crept in that started to divert your time. It could be TV. Amen. It could be TV. It could be the Internet. It could be, you know, any little, it could be a job. Amen. I know we need to work, but the job shouldn't be your source. Amen. If you're getting too much fulfillment on the job, that job is becoming a source. You there to do a job. I ain't there to be all cool with everybody. I ain't there to get my fulfillment. Or, but I'm not there for that. I'm there to do a job, get paid, go home. They paying me to be here. I'm not there to get, this is not like the office. I'm not part of this culture where they don't have no life. And, and, I, and, and their whole life is their co-workers. I got family. I got people. I got things I got to take care of. I, so, so that job can become the Uzziah. Talk to me. So, when, so, you, so, 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 so that Uzziah comes, and what it, the design of that Uzziah is it steals your love and your fervency for God. You was on fire for the Lord. That's why I say sometimes people on fire for the Lord, they get a job that takes them away from, and notice the people that this happened to. Their job will take them away from Wednesday Bible study, and it'll take them away from Sunday service, and all of a sudden that person, you, they'll be slowly backing off of the Lord. For you know, they might have a little money, but they're backing off of the Lord. Now they're struggling to even be saved. Uzziah was the job. They didn't discern that I need the word of God more than I need this money right now. Yeah, I need a job, but I need to pray and believe for a job that's going to let me stay around the word of God and not take me away from the word of God. Say amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I saw a person, they got married, and all of a sudden their, 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 their spouse became Uzziah. They would lo love God, love the church on fire. They got married. Their spouse had a Uzziah spirit on them and turned them away from the Lord. Turned them away. Now all of a sudden they backsliding, going to the club. Why? Because they had allowed the, the spirit of Uzziah to enter into their life and steal their affection for God. Then they can't raise their hands in worship. They can't get a breakthrough in prayer. Every time they pray, they're crying all the time because they can't break through no more. Why? Because they don't see the Lord lifted up. Every prayer is a, every song is a we fall down and we get up song. There's no songs of victory or songs of Zion in their heart anymore. There's no blood songs, overcoming songs or Christ songs. Now it's all about uh, 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 take me to the king songs. Them songs where I'm always struggling songs. Say amen. 
Why? Because Uzziah has come in and their affection has always been torn in between God and the thing that they that is still in the affection of God. Say amen. It could be a car. It could be some money. Ain't it funny how we serve God great broke. The minute we start, start blessing us, all of a sudden, our affections, we was in the house of God 24-7. Then we get blessed, and all of a sudden, now we got to focus more on that blessing than we do on God. That's the spirit of Uzziah that has come in and stole and kept and, and, and robbed us from seeing him high and lifted up. Talk to me. I'm talking better than y'all saying something tonight. Y'all get this message I'm saying. Are y'all there? All of a sudden, the 5 a.m. prayer stops. Getting up in the morning, devotion stops. Amen. Now we run into Uzziah, racing to get to Uzziah in the morning. Amen. Say amen. amen. You think your work ain't Uzziah, racing to get there. Almost getting in wrecks trying to get to Uzziah. Forgetting the affection for the king. Amen. Forgetting the fact. Forgetting the fact that you used to love yeah. the train of the Lord. Yeah. You used to love when it filled your own temple. Now you now, now you don't been out of that presence so long. You know you, you it's hard for you to even you, you know I mean you mean you, you stop missing it. Now what they are talking about on drive time radio is more important. You used to go to church with work you used to go to work with worship songs playing. Now you want to know what they talking about or what the latest music is. Talk to me. King Uzziah has slipped in and stole your affection. You used to get up at night and pray. You used to pray a lot. Now all of a sudden you, you just go to sleep without even praying. You don't care anymore. King Uzziah has came in and kept you from seeing Jesus high and lifted up. He's King Uzziah. That spirit has robbed you. Y'all heard what I'm telling y'all or not. Are y'all there? Let me read it again. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. High and lifted up in his train filled the temple. That's one of the greatest scriptures of the law of release. That something must die in order for me to go on with God. Something has to become the sacrifice. You didn't hear what I said. The Bible says that, 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 that Elisha was plowing with his ox and his, and his plow. But when he saw Elijah and, and saw, uh, saw the king high and lifted up, felt the train of the Lord had hit his life. He went back and sacrificed. He sacrificed his plow and his ox in order to go on with the man of God. There is a problem. I just developed. I just now identified it. People don't sacrifice. They don't sacrifice everything to go on and follow a man of God. They always got a little reserve, and I just got a little reserve. I still got the relationship over with this pastor, and I still got the relationship over this church. They got a little reserve. They haven't sacrificed everything to walk with a man of God. But when the train of the Lord, that's what a mantle was, that's what hit Elisha, and he sensed the presence and power of God, and he went back and got, he, see, he made his, he made what he was following a sacrifice for God. Can you do that? Yes. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yes. How bad do we want this thing? That's why. You know when you know when Uzziah is in your life, your worship starts. Your worship starts being tainted. You, you used to worship God with tears running down your face. And there every now and then you may get intimate. You used to worship God and you was listening to the Lord in your heart. Now you listen to the song we're singing. Uzziah has crept in. When we used to sing, you used to see the Lord high and lifted up. That's what brought your true worship out. Now, you, now you're looking for what's the newest song they're going to sing. Isaiah has crept in. You no longer see this Lord. He's not, he's not on the throne of your life anymore. You used to, you, you, you used to pray. Now you play PlayStation before you go to bed. Isaiah is in your life. What must die is living in your life. Say amen. amen. And, when, and when something is supposed to be killed and you allow it to live, it will resurrect every bad thing that was once dead. Listen to me. The Bible says, well, there's envy and strife, there's, there's confusion in every evil work. When a person allows desire to live, everything that God once killed in their life will be resurrected. Listen, let me, let me, let me, let me give you a word here. 
if you don't kill what needs to be killed, that thing that was supposed to die will resurrect stuff that was dead. Say amen. Because you didn't deal with the fornication, it'll resurrect smoking. Y'all ain't ready for this. You didn't deal with your attitude. God was trying to get you to develop fruit. You didn't kill that, that Uzziah in your attitude. And it, and, and it resurrected cussing. Are y'all not there? Are there? Are y'all, come on, y'all there or not there? When, when something needs to die and you, don't, and, you don't, and you don't cut it off, then it will start resurrecting stuff that was once dead. Sins that you had overcome. Oh, heard me. Stuff you know you overcame. Now it's in another season. It's, 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 it's like his temptation is strong now. What happened? When you don't kill one thing, Jesus said if you break one of the law, you're guilty of all the law. Amen. So one thing you won't kill will resurrect stuff that should have been killed. Oh. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? If you don't cut, that's the same thing with people. If you don't get these people out, they'll resurrect the negativity Amen. that was once dead. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They will bring back up stuff that was cut off. It happens in a church. You can war to get a spirit out. But if you let these people live, why did God tell the Joshua and them, utterly destroy it, utterly destroy them. Don't let no children, no animals, don't touch none of their stuff, they go. Utterly destroy everything. Why did he say that? Because any little thing that's not that you, that you allowed to live will resurrect what was dead. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. So things that you won't kill. That's why you're struggling. Because you won't kill it all. Say kill it all. Kill it all. You, you sacrifice but not obedient. I got 20 albums of praise songs. But I still got a Beyonce's record on my iPod. I said it. Amen. You won't kill it all. I got all Christian rap, but I got three, four Jay-Z songs. And because I won't kill it all, when I get when I'm when I'm going through my, my issues and I'm and, and all of a sudden I, I need a release. For some reason I'm tempted to put on the Beyonce. And the Beyonce starts to resurrect the feelings of lust. Resurrect the feelings of a boyfriend. Resurrect the feelings of, of lesbianism or homosexuality or drugs or getting high. Because I didn't kill it all. Amen. You didn't utterly destroy it because you didn't release it. It stands up like Jason. Amen. And you turn around and say, man, this thing is on me. Amen. Now you're at church battling. Now you're struggling and you're wary because I didn't think. Yeah. I didn't see myself getting. Yeah. I didn't know I was so watching Uzziah reign that I didn't know how far away from the Lord yeah. I had gotten. Say amen. amen. All of a sudden, drinking to be resurrected. Smoking weed to be resurrected. Don't, don't be no fool. Don't look at people because they come to church. When, this is the reason why my man and my wife tell you, live holy. Yes. Because what, when you don't do that, whatever area that you, whatever area you allow, the Bible calls it the activity of error, whatever area you allow, to, you walk in error in will resurrect everything that God killed at one time. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to tell y'all? Why do you think the Bible says don't even mention the things that was done in the flesh? Don't even mention them. Why? Because even focusing on them can bring resurrection. You can resurrect something just by keep focusing on it. I don't, remember, I don't want to remember the music I was listening to. I don't want to remember the club I was at. I don't want to remember the corner I stood on. I don't remember the girl I was with. I don't want to remember none of that. Amen. In other words, I'm, see, Satan, the King Uzziah's job is to make you reminisce. Oh. King Uzziah's job is to make you start reminiscing because it's what is he doing? I'm taking your attention away from the Lord. Yeah. So I got to make you reminisce on when, when the, you know, the good side of sin. And when it wasn't all that pressure, and wasn't all that warfare, and wasn't all that praying all the time, and wasn't no devils fighting me, and, and I had peace in my mind when I was out there doing it. Say, amen. amen. King Uzziah will start making you reminisce. And as you begin to reminisce, 
you'll find yourself walking in it. Say amen. amen. What you don't kill will resurrect other things. I believe that's a spiritual law. I believe it's a spiritual law. I really do. I believe that's why they have to get all the infection out of you because they know if they leave a little infection, that little infection, where well, the Bible says it, a little leaven. Leaven the whole lump. Just a little bit that you allow to come in will, will work its way through the whole dough. Just a little bit. Leaven is sin. And, every, and that's the reason why when we say be holy, that's why I don't understand why people are not on the altar and crying out, Lord, make me holy. No, Lord, I ain't worried about the tongues yet. I ain't worried about the, all that yet. I ain't worried about no preaching. Or no, make me holy. Get, the, get this mess out of me. Lord, get my heart right. Why? Because, because anything that's there that I don't deal with will eventually permeate through my whole Christian walk. And, you, every, and later on in life, people are going to see the areas that I didn't develop fruit in. Is this good or not good? Yes. Stand on your feet. The Bible says when King Uzziah died, keep the, keep the camera on me. Don't, 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 don't zoom out. Keep it close. The Bible says when King Uzziah died, the year he died, say the year. The year. Say, is that, is that season? We're talking about season of time. Amen. In the same year he died, that's when they saw the Lord. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. In the year you kill that thing, that's when you're going to see the breakthroughs. That's when you're going to see the presence. We, we have told single women for years, as long as you keep your man, your go-to fallback guy, as long as you keep some fornicating cat, as long as you're touching yourself, as long as you don't fight lust with all your power and might, till you get victory over it, you're going to be, you ain't going to have, God's not going to send you. You're going to have to go out and hook and crook. And don't think everybody got married, God sent them. God didn't always send these brothers to these women. Some of them just hooked and crooked and got a man. And they use Pastor Steve Amen. to help them stay together. Amen. They wasn't ready to get married. Amen. They just used the man of God to lay the law of wisdom in them so they can stay together. Amen. Say amen. amen. But when you don't cut off, when you don't, see, in order to really get God in, I'm going to give you a nugget. In order to really get breakthrough, you must, you must do what Elisha did. You must sacrifice that thing that you was following. You must sacrifice it as a, as a, he, he made it a, he made a burnt offering unto the Lord. And that was him saying, Lord, I'll never go back. I'll never go back. And he sacrificed that thing to the Lord. How do I sacrifice something? Cut it off. You got people on faith, cut it off. People on your phone, cut them off. Change your number. Cut it off. That's how you do it. People at work, you know. Look, every time I talk to them, I mean, cut them off. Amen. Start going here, get persecuted for righteous sake. They're going to be mad, but cut them off. Amen. You saying, Lord, every time you cut them off, Lord, I'm sacrificing this for you. Amen. I like this relationship. This is fulfilling. I like the guys. I like to talk. But you know what? For you, Lord, I, I, this, is a burnt, I'm a, this is a burnt offering. Amen. Then the Lord began to say, oh, now you're starting to see me high and lifted up. Instead of, this, instead of the spirit of Uzziah that blocks you from seeing me, that distracts you, makes you reminisce. Y'all there are not there. You can never backslide without the spirit of Uzziah. Are y'all there? The Bible says, and it, and it stood above the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With tw two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And, and listen, 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 listen. Say sight and sound. What am I missing a sin? Well, they was look at what they was missing. They was missing the sin, these great angels that wanted to come into their midst but couldn't come because this is the spirit of Uzziah that stole the glory of God. That they couldn't show up because if they would have showed up, Uzziah would have said, They heard because of me. They had to wait till he died so they could show up. So all, all glory would be pointed to Jehovah. So look at what they wasn't seeing in the, in the house of God. Secondly, the Bible says, and one cried to another saying, holy, holy, oh, look at what they wasn't hearing. They wasn't seeing the beauty of God and they wasn't hearing the revelation of God as long as Uzziah was living. Boy. Are y'all there? And, 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 and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. 
the post of the door moved and the house was filled with smoke. And you say, Lord, my prayer life is gone. I'm struggling. I can't pray no more. Because that's what Uzziah comes after. I can't get a breakthrough. I keep fighting. To get a breakthrough, it's hard to pray. Because Uzziah has caused you to lose your perseverance. It's hard to pray without passion. When you lose your passion for the Lord, that's the whole point of seeing his throne and seeing him high and lifted up. It keeps you passionate with God. When you don't see that no more, it's hard to pray to something that you can't envision. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives you a vision of God that keeps you going towards him. But when you can't envision him, it's hard to pray. You feel like you're talking to somebody you don't know. Amen. And the way you get you rekindle that is through first white hot repentance. Yes. I repent for Uzziah. Yes. I repent for the game, for playing a, the video game more than praying. I repent for the things I put in place of you. I repent for eating when I should have been fasting. I come on, I repent. I, 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 I repent when I should have been under the word, but I was watching something crazy. I repent. When you start walking in that repentance, it starts rekindling your passion for God. That's why the Bible said repent and do your first works over. Go back to when you saw him high and lifted up the last time. How did you see him then? You was walking in repentance and white hot love. You was you wasn't you wasn't letting no unforgiveness in your heart. You wasn't letting no you wasn't letting strife in your heart. You wasn't angry all the time. That's what start you. The devil used that to steal your affection for God because he know if you don't have an affection for God, it's hard to pray when you don't have no passion. So he robs you of your passion and replaces, Uzziah replaces the affection for God with the affection for uh, natural things. So when I would pray and want spiritual things, I had a spiritual appetite. Now I have a natural one. When I would fast, now I have a natural appetite. Talk to me. Come on, I'm trying to minister to you. You sense the spirit of God ministering to you? I'm trying to get you back to that place of your first love. Trying to get that Uzziah out of your life so you can see the Lord high and lift it up again. So you rekindle your love affair with God. Don't be common with God. Don't think you've seen all you don't see. Don't think you went as far as you can go. God didn't back off for you. You backed off for God. He didn't let you down. You walked away. He's still there. He said if you will, if you will kill your Uzziah, you will see me once again. If you kill what standing up in, in your face, you, you will see me once again. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Say, Lord, kill my Uzziah. Whatever it is, laziness, slowfulness, unfaithfulness, procrastination, lust, fornication, anger, rejection, confusion, gossip, money, whatever it is, standing up, blocking me. From seeing you kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Whatever's robbing me of my prayer life, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Hallelujah. And in your own time, did you know? Did you know? Church should be a little bit like school in a way. You can't get everything when you get here, so you need some homework. And your homework is. A, a season of repentance. See, that's intimate. That's between you and God. Nobody can make you do that. You can forget this message tomorrow. Most of y'all probably will, but I'm telling you. You need, to, you need to have this in your home before you go to bed. You need a season of repentance. Not one or two times, but a constant repentance. Get back to that place where, see, repentance builds the fear of the Lord. What a good word. When you walk around constantly realizing, Lord, I repent for that thought. Lord, I repent for that. I'm for... Everything the Holy Spirit brings up in your heart, you start repenting for it. I didn't say you was even delivered of it. Listen to me, two different things. See, sometimes we think because we not delivered up something that we must that, that we, we really get tired of repenting. We say, or oh, we act like, well, I don't want to really keep saying I'm sorry if I know I'm going to do it again. That ain't what the Bible tells you. You repent every time. The day you stop repenting is when you get in trouble. You repent every time. Even if you fall, you repent. You, you acknowledge that God, God, I recognize this is sin. This is wrong. Even though I did it, it's wrong. You will sense the fear of the Lord come back. You won't stop nothing until you fear God more. You won't stop nothing until you reverence God again. If you don't fear the Lord in that area, you're going to keep doing it. And you don't build your fear of respect from up, up with the Lord until you start repenting. And you got to start repenting all the time. 
It's a season of repentance. You need a quiet place to repent. You need time for the Holy Spirit show me why I'm missing it. Look, I know my attitude's been bad. I know I've let anger come in. I've let things ride. When you get in that season of repentance, it builds the fruit of the Lord. The fruit of the Lord is what gives you the passion to, 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 to break off and stop stuff. You can't stop stuff without the fruit of God. The fruit of the Lord leads you to his word because you don't want to sin against him. So you start learning how to live for him. The Spirit of Uzziah takes the taste of the word out of your mouth. Takes the taste of the word out. When you can't taste the word of God no more, your, you know, your, your taste buds had a craving for the word of God. Now they don't have it no more. And that's why you don't fear the Lord. You don't see him enough. You don't read about him enough. You don't meditate on him enough. You don't study him enough. You don't talk to him enough. Say amen. Say, Lord, take me back to my first works, to my first love. In Jesus' name, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Don't forget this message. Go on YouTube and see it again. But also, when you get home, remember this. Write it down. Everybody, find something to write with, even if it's just a turn piece of paper off somewhere. Write this down. Put it in your pocket. Put this, put this on your mirror, on your nightstand. Put it somewhere where you look at it every day. Put it there. Put this letter there. Get you some paper. Write it down. Put it in your wallet. Put it somewhere that you look at it every day. Something that you see all the time. If you put it over your bed, put it on the ceiling where you look up and see it. Put it on the mirror where you brush your teeth. Don't rely on, don't rely on calculators here. Write it down. Write it down so you can tape it somewhere. All I want you to write on the paper is a season of repentance. No matter of fact, right, I'm in my season of repentance. I am in my season of repentance. We used to know that when we got saved, we called it a purging season. We got to purge and get your heart right. There was something to that old apostolic holiness. I, I miss it now. I, I, you know, as we done got so liberal with the gospel and so loosed and freed, I kind of miss those old, uh, uh, those old tra good traditions. There were some good traditions in that. They made sure you had the Holy Ghost. Made sure you were saved for real. This stuff we got now, we don't know people saved the Holy Spirit field because everybody just has a microwave existence. They made one thing I know they used to do, they broke your pride. They'll break your pride. You stay on that all till your pride's broke. Wasn't, no, wasn't all this pride we had. We need to go back to some of that stuff. Let's not, let's not throw away the good because there was so much bad involved. There was some good principles. People got around the altar and tarried and waited on the Lord and cried out and snotted and did whatever they got to do. Maybe we need to get messed up again for God. Maybe we look too good to be filled with the Holy Ghost. What are we going to do for the Holy Ghost? I used to think something was wrong with that years ago. Now I realize, Lord, them people was getting filled. They was getting filled and saved for real. And now we, don't, we, we spend two minutes at the altar. It's too long. You got to get around the altar again and cry out to the Lord and pray. You ain't got to wait on no altar call. You can, if you feel it, you do it. You give it. Oh. There was people should have came tonight to hear this word. Look at what they missed tonight. Look, I told y'all, this is not a game. The word of God is what you want. They missed it. This is, this, is a, see, this is a breakthrough message. They can get it off the internet, but it's, not, it's, it's different when you're sitting in the place.